Hey, Founder Nation, I'm super excited to bring you Mr. Brandon T. Adams. Brandon is a two-time Emmy Award winner that has all kinds of incredible information to share on how he went to the top, to the bottom, right back to the top again, partnering with incredible people like Kevin Harrington, one of the original sharks from Shark Tank. Jump on in to this incredible episode. Let's go. Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of the Founder Podcast. Today, I am joined by Mr. Brandon T. Adams, founder and CEO of Accelerant Media Group, based out of Nashville. Is that correct? Nashville, Tennessee. That's awesome. This guy is a two-time award, Emmy Award winning producer. He's got an incredible backstory. He helps scale nine-figure businesses, has a huge portfolio. He's a partner with Kevin Harrington, one of the former uh, Sharks from Shark Tank. He's got a really cool background. We're really excited to jump in and, and learn a little bit more about you, Brandon. Well, thank you for having me, Chris. I'm, I'm excited to go on some stories and share some lessons along the way. Sweet, man. Where, uh, where are you originally from? So I'm originally from Iowa, a small town, Garneville, Iowa. There's about 700 people. So wasn't... Uh, like, give you an example. The closest Starbucks was an hour away. The closest Walmart was 30 minutes away. So I was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I love it, man. That sounds a lot like the the place I grew up when I, I, we were. Uh, we grew up, I grew up in a small town, about 2,500 people. Yep. And, you know, when you went shopping, you were going to town. Yeah. And it was like... <laughs> like 30 40 minutes away to be able to get to walmart or costco or, or different things 100 so awesome. percent, yeah very good so what does a small town boy like you end up being on the big stage like uh, bridge the gap for us what what were some of the kind of the defining points along the the experience that, that ended up getting you in front of the big stage yeah it was I mean, it was it was hard work for one, um, but I'll tell you the thing that changed my life. I mean, I, I grew up uh, as an entrepreneur. I was in the ice business. I sold packaged ice for a living and awesome. ended up going to college. I wasn't the best. I mean, my entrepreneur endeavors in college was selling uh, moonshine. <laughs> I was selling alcohol and, and drugs, and I uh, got a 1.68 GPA my freshman year. So I was like uh, mm. not very book smart, uh, but what changed street my life. Street, <laughs> street smart. But what changed my life was I I was failing speech comp class of all things. And in order to pass the class, I had to go get um, extra credit. And so I attended a class presentation by this famous inventor uh, named Cactus Jack Behringer. And he showed this reel of him on Shark Tank. He did a deal with Kevin Harrington, Harrington and Barbara Corkin. And so that was like when I first like saw the, the whole Shark Tank thing. But also, he led me to this book called Think and Go Rich. I always awesome share book. it because, like, my life before then and after then was totally different. Is I didn't think that from a small town, like, oh, I can go make millions of dollars, I could build wealth and all this. I just thought, okay, I'm going to be the best in the ice business and maybe go make six figures and, and do that. And so when I read the book, it completely transformed how I thought. I thought bigger. I realized I needed to be around people that are way further ahead than me. And so that was that was a pivotal moment in my career. And I was 20, 20 years old at the time. So I'm 14, 34 now. That was 14 years ago. And mm. that is where, okay, I can do other things. And then fast forward, I mean, I just put on hard work. And really, I found people that were way ahead of me. And I found ways, very bluntly, to make them money. Because when mm. you make somebody money, they listen. And so after I made them money with my talents... I found ways to get into business with them, which allowed me to get into bigger opportunities. And then the rest was just put in the work. <laughs> so tell us, so tell us more about that, making other people money. Like give us some like real world experience yeah. and things that you actually did to go and provide value to these people that were well ahead of you. So I'll give you the first example. Uh, I got into crowdfunding. So I was, if you think back in the day, they still have it today. So this back in 2014, 15, they had Kickstarter and Egogo. And so I understood through my own failures that that was a way to raise money. And so I launched my own campaign back in the day for a product called Arctic Stick. And we raised like 26 grand. It wasn't a lot of money. But I saw where it was going. I'm like, this crowdfunding thing is going to be something. And so Absolutely. I started building my brand around a crowdfunding expert and, and getting out there. And I was on a podcast show like this. 
And I had a guy named John Lee Dumas on my podcast show. And he came on at the end of every show. Like, I'm sure you probably do too. What I suggest any podcaster is the mic's off. I would say, hey, thank you for coming on the show. I'm a crowdfunding expert. Anything I can do to support you, John, I'm in. And John said, I'm actually thinking about doing a book launch through Kickstarter with a product called the Freedom Turtle. And so I was young. I was trying to figure things out. And we got off that call. I literally spent the whole next day creating a whole page for him in campaign. And fast forward five months because I, I took on the campaign. I said, you don't need to pay me. I'm going to do this for free. I just want a testimonial and I want to get on your podcast show. We launched five months later. We did $453,000 in 33 days. It became the fifth awesome. largest crowdfunding campaign in history. And that led to me being the crowdfunding expert. And so that helped me get more clients. He opened up door. I mean, him and I are good friends now. But like I went right. on his show four times since then. First time I went on the show, I got a bunch of business. And so that was a way for me to take my specialized knowledge, help him make money. And then I started doing that for other people. And then I found other ways to add value beyond just crowdfunding. I, I was doing video production and stuff like that. It's awesome. So, you know, it's a key aspect of what you just shared for the listeners is like, take something that you find, you know, some moderate success, right? Your first crowdfunding uh, run was, was good. $26,000, you know, it's nothing to like get crazy at, but no. you said, you said, Hey, I'm, I'm decent at this. Right. So I'm going to double down. I think too often mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs, they, they take something that they're decent at and they don't go deeper. Right. They, they get distracted by something else. They 100%. run after the, the, the next shiny object rather than saying, Hey, I'm going to use this and I'm going to compound. And you know, the thing I realizing, I mean, obviously you're only 34 years old. I'm, I'm 39 turn 40 next, next month. In, in the world's eyes, we're very young. We're, we're very, yeah. but, but the compound effect is very real when you just double down and triple down and keep digging the same hole until eventually you have these incredible breakthroughs, uh, like, like this one you had with John Lee Dumas. I mean, I, mean I, I look at this, so this was, man, time flies. Like this was, that campaign was, uh, what, eight years ago, nine years ago. And it, one, the one thing I did, which I tell other people do is, Find somebody that's very influential in their industry. If you can find a famous person or an influential person and you help them make money, that makes it easier. You get exposed to your audience. It makes it easier for you to grow a business. And at that time, I needed the money, but I said, no. I like, you know how hard it was? I just helped raise half a million dollars to not get any money from that. But that got me the next book launch with Kevin Harrington. I got on the Think and Go Rich movie. I did all these different launches because they knew me for that one thing, but I didn't let that be my, okay, that's, that was my thing. Like I kept doing other things, getting more track record, more experience. And then as I was doing it and being with all these very wealthy people, I'm like, what are they doing? I was listening, asking the right questions and then bringing deals to them, which I got a part of. And I realized, okay, how can I make more money for myself? So like I'm learning along the way, providing value, making the money, making a little money, but then, okay, how can I start building my own wealth? And so it took a while. I mean, most people overestimate what they can do in one or two years, but they underestimate what they can do in five to 10 years. Looking back now, the 14 year journey, I mean, it gets easier and easier. You get more obstacles in different ways, but it gets easier to make money and it gets easier to get opportunity. You just got to stay on the path, right? It's uh. It's no overnight success. So speaking of which, at what point did you start to actually accumulate wealth? Like how long were you sending down roots and adding value to these different people before you, things started rolling for you? Financially? So I started making money in 2016, 17, but I had to completely start over when I was 29. So I, I, uh, I had some deals, had some things, companies go public, made some money. But it was in 2018, 19 that I almost had a fall bankruptcy. So went to the top, mm -hmm. lost everything. And then to be honest, what really helped me was COVID. Uh, COVID mm -hmm. hit. I just went through a huge crisis and I got more into consulting for equity and, and really helping grow companies and get a piece of the pie and also get paid along the way. And that was really my partnership with Kevin Harrington. 
that he opened up the opportunity for me. I really added value. I got into deals and then I started to get my way back up. So awesome. then it started again in 2021. So it really wasn't that long ago. Um, I made money. I lost everything and I came back. So when you lost everything, what was going through your mind, right? Like going through hell and, and I've been, I've been, I've been exact in your exact same shoes, right? Like I, I had a lot of success early in my career, ended up filing bankruptcy in 2011, lost everything, less than a thousand dollars in my bank account, car repoed out of my driveway, all the same way. The whole night. Me too. Right. Yeah. right? So like go, going through that, like walk us through the emotion and the, the mindset and, and, and how you got through that. I'm grateful uh, that it happened. Um, I believe in God and I believe God put it in my way for a reason um, because I probably would have turned into probably not a good person if it didn't happen. Uh, I was half a million in the hole. I'll tell you the conversation I had. I mean, I remember when uh, my wife said, hey, our vehicle's not there. And it's because I was four months behind on our payment and they repossessed it. I remember talking to the bank and he told me, we're taking everything from you. Like, And he told me, the other company that had another lien on something, he said, you tell them, they don't let that go, that lien. We're going to bankrupt you and they won't get a thing. That's what the banker told me. I lost my land. I lost everything I owned. My, my father didn't talk to me for a while. And I, here I am as this guy that's got it all figured out online, but I had nothing and I felt like a fraud, especially as I'm speaking on stages, but I, and I, and I was making money still, but I chose not to file bankruptcy, which hindsight I should have. <laughs> and all the money I was making was going to debt collectors. I was getting 20 calls a day. I had to put my phone in do not disturb. So I would, I couldn't handle the debt collectors anymore. And so I'm in this place, no money, and I'm trying to make it. Every day I woke up, I knew I had to grind just to get money so I could keep going. And I'm married. And what's, fresh, going, and what's going through your mind at this time? Like, how are you feeling? I'm feeling like a piece of shit. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm feeling like a piece of shit that failed and made a bunch of mistakes. And, and it, was, it was very difficult. It was like identity crisis. And I went to my mentors. Like I, I'm here. Call my mentors. I said I don't want money. I want advice. What do, What would you do? Like I'm selling my TV off the wall and selling my guitar for eighty bucks just to get some money. And so that's not a fun feeling. And to be humbling enough to like go to somebody that saw you as a success, but now I'm kind of starting over. And and a lot of them gave me really good advice. They're like, hey, for one, it's not that the world of file bankruptcy. Two, just keep on your path. Keep going. You're young. And and I did keep going. And then once I got one deal, okay, there's more light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, more opportunity came. There's more light at the end of the tunnel. And then eventually I look back and I'm like, holy where am I? Like, how how did that happen? <laughs> like, I kicked back pretty quick within 24 months. Um, and I guess any advice just to give real feedback for people if you're going through it right now. I went to the gym every single day. I dealt with my demons in my mind at the gym. I crushed it. Uh, I just kept doing the steps, doing the phone calls, doing the emails, going to the events. And I didn't focus on all the in my life. I focused on where I wanted to go. And one great mentor, he told me if I was going to tackle the debt, he's like, you need to organize this. You need to act one thing off at a time. And that's what I did because then it became more uh, feasible versus like everything's here. And it's like, oh. I'm just throwing money in a bucket and it's never <laughs> go anywhere. And so uh, that's what I would say. Be around the right people, have good people, open up and be open to advice and uh, manage your mental health. Because for me, that was going to the gym, talking to people and just keep working. You can't quit. Most people would have gave it up and they would have went to the corporate job and said, okay, this entrepreneur thing isn't for me. That's not my blood. Well, I, th I think your mentors were absolutely right. Like just, just take it one bite at a time because frankly, so when I, when I filed bankruptcy, it was for 2.2 .2 million and wow. even, and, and that was a significant amount of money at age 27 for me. Uh, and, but had I known what I know now, I would actually given the same advice that you're meant, like don't file bankruptcy. I, I actually wish I hadn't because it, it caused a lot of grief for a very long time with, with uh, lenders and the mm -hmm. ability to leverage and grow and everything it else, does, and yeah. to this day, you know, to this day, if I 
fill out an application. The question isn't, have you filed bankruptcy in the last seven years? It's, have you ever filed bankruptcy? And, and, and I still have to explain it no matter what, even though my credit scores are 830 and, and, and everything else, like, uh, you know, it, it still causes me grief to this day. And, and so I think like you received the right mentor and you look to mentors for me, I, I tried handling it on my own. Uh, like it was it's hard it was me of just like, trying to appear to the world that I had life figured out. Well, meanwhile, I was battling this, this inner demon. It, it's hard a conversation too, when you're afraid to talk to certain people about it because they think everything's all right. And, right. and I, by the way, that, that story, like, it's very humbling. Like I went to my friend who did file and he told me, he's like the day I went to court and they did like, it was the most humbling experience. And so kudos to you for keep going because there's so many people out there that have filed bankruptcy. Like you think like it's, it's not honestly the end of the world. <laughs> um, but anyways, so let's, let's go back actually even further. What, what do you think were the decisions that led you to that position where you were in that deep hole? Like what are some pitfalls that you would have avoid knowing what you know now, uh, some things. So some of those early on in your entrepreneurial days. I honestly don't think I would have done it differently. I I was, to be really honest, I was putting all my money into a TV show. I was putting into my personal brand. I was filming a show at the time that we were traveling the country, find, flying in a film crew, filming this content, and, and just pouring everything into it. So I had one business I was working. I was taking money from that, put into this. Then this one's failing. And then I had leveraged out different loans. And before I knew it, it all came snowing, balling at me. And it's like, time to pay out <laughs> and 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 actually when i when i did kind of hit the big wall is i was planning on selling a business at the time and it dragged out when i was planning as a sale to be pretty big well it turns out the sale wasn't going to be a, near what i thought it was and then at that point it was too far deep that i was like selling it just to like pay some debt off um yeah so uh i guess don't over leverage yourself too much that's maybe one thing to put um don't rob Peter to pay Paul uh, too much either. Like, yes, I believe in some businesses can help fuel other businesses, but not to the point where it's taking the other business down too. Uh, don't do that. He's a lot of entrepreneurs. Hey, you got this business and that baby's eating everything from the other one. Um, you got to learn to quit <laughs> um, when when you're, you're deep. Like sometimes it's like, oh, I'm almost there. Just one more thing, one more thing. Well, at that point, you're so deep you just got to cut your losses and keep walking. And so, and I think that's one thing as entrepreneurs, when do you, when you know when to hold them and no one to fold them? Yeah, for sure. Who, who would you say is your biggest mentor? Has it been Kevin Harrington? Where, who, who has been the, the biggest influence in your life? There was three, I will say, and there's reasons for each. My father first, uh, my father always taught me to, just really be a good person and go above and beyond and create great customer service. And and so that's one. Another one was Jeff Hoffman. He's uh, one of the guys, co-founders of Priceline.com. Jeff helped me understand scalability and customer feedback. Ask, like literally ask, not dumb questions, but the questions that give you data that can help you form a product. And then Kevin, do you, will, you, yeah. Do you personally know uh, Jeff Hoffman? I've, I've done many business endeavors with him. He's actually one of the guys that want to end me with us. Yes. Um, so tell, so tell us about like how that relationship formed, because I know a lot of the listeners or whatnot. They're yeah, like, sure. Right. It's great to say, I, I know this guy from Priceline, but like, how does that, how does a 34 year old go? About I'll tell you the exact story. So I was, uh, it was 2015. I was speaking at an event and I was one of the speakers and he was one of the speakers and he got off stage and I said, Hey, Jeff, I loved your talk. I got this event coming up next year because I hosted events for a living. Um, it's called Young Entrepreneur Convention. I would love to have you speak. He said, hey, uh, you know, I'd love to. Um, give me a card. And I'm sure a lot of people go up to him and say that, right? And so I emailed afterwards and his team reached out. And obviously the first thing the team does, because you have the people around the person, um, which right. now I have that. But it's like they said, okay, well, he's got a fee. I said, I, I don't have any uh, money to pay a fee, but we can give him great exposure, all this. 
And it was like constant email follow-up. Like I was here, no everything. Because it wasn't even him anymore. It was his team. I was persistent. And then so he came to Iowa, middle of nowhere. And he spoke at one of my events. And that was the first part or time I built a relationship with him. I've never asked him for money. That's the thing. When you have somebody of wealth and influence, everybody wants something from them. He spoke at my event. I connected with people in my circle. I actually made the connection, him and Kevin Harrington at the same time. And then I helped him. He became a producer for one of our shows. And I just gave him the opportunity for exposure. So then I started making him money, bringing him deals, all that stuff. But it started with just, hey, would you do this? I asked. He said yes, but I followed up because the whole team kind of tried to make it not happen. And then persistence and eventually... Fast forward, it took three or four years. I mean, we were speaking on stages together. We were doing masterminds together. We were closing deals. Um, and he's still a friend of mine. Like we have a, we're part of a nonprofit called World Youth Horizon. So we raise money for charity. And so there's different projects we're a part of. But yeah, that's how the Jeff Hoffman came into my world and how I actually got the connection. So again, it goes back to add value, make them money, help them. What do they want? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And then you were going to uh, uh, share with us uh, your relationship with Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. So Kevin, Kevin and I are so alike. It's it's crazy. Like he grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, small town boy, young entrepreneur, sealing driveways to the AC uh, heating and cooling business, and then eventually getting the products. I grew up in Iowa, working in the ice business and, and doing all these different things. I I connected through him through my mentor, and I'm, I'll be very specific with the audience. So. I went to that class presentation where I led to this book. I followed up to that mentor afterwards. Like, oh, I was so amazed. Like, hey, can you mentor me? He said, go read this book, son. And I read it. And then I ended up hiring him as a consultant. Um, I remember when I did it because I was 22 years old and he wanted 10 grand at the time. And I was broke out of college. I paid him 10 grand cash. My parents thought it was a scam. They thought he was a bad person, all this. And I'm like, I'm investing in my future. I paid him and I knew I was in proximity with Kevin Harrington. And so eventually when my opportunity came, I reached out to Kevin with a personal video and I asked him to come speak at one of my events and I got him to speak at one of my events. And then from there, I just started building the relationship up. And and so after that first event, uh, we just did more deals together, but I kept showing up because sometimes what happens is people don't, they're not in the long game. They like, okay, they show up, they get the connection, then they take it for granted. They take advantage of it. I always showed up and I always planted the seeds with the relationship, watered the relationship. And eventually we just became really close. Like I I consider him almost like a father figure to me. And his son is close to my age, my business partner, Brian. And so we have this like kind of almost like a family structure, even though we have a business together. And it just took years. And why is he a great mentor to me? He taught me, for one, a fair deal. If you don't have a fair deal, it's not a long-term relationship. How can you create a fair deal with everybody? Take care of people. They'll bring you more deals. That's how he grew the infomercial industry. He took care of these different inventors and like Arnold Morris, who did the Ginzi knife. He took care of Arnold Morris and Arnold Morris brought in Billy Mays and all these other people. So he took care of them. They brought in more opportunity. So I understood that. And the biggest thing is the dream team. When you can bring the dream team together, who all have their expertise, and you partake in this participation and help at a company, you all can make money from it. And so that's he, Kevin, the opportunities I got from Kevin is what got me out of the hole and it's helped me now to build what I have today. And so we have 20 some companies, we're a part of some public, some private. Uh, we have investment in a fund, we have many other things that we're doing. And and when that company is a big success, a liquidation event, him, his son and I and our team, we partake in that and and we go to the next one. And it's it's fun along the way too. So I can give a lot of my success, I would say, to him because uh he's always been good to me. And and we we've traveled the world together. It's it's been a fun journey. I learned so much. Sounds like a good time. What is it what is something that uh most of the world doesn't know about Kevin? <laughs> Um, it's a good one. I got to watch what I'm going to say here. Um, <laughs> he, he's 14 years sober. He doesn't drink alcohol. 
Um, and he, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story most people don't know that Kevin and I had, and it's a good one. Hey, Founder Nation, are you struggling with scaling your business? Whether that's you just kind of hit a lull patch, you're making enough money, but you really wanted to get to the next level. We have launched Founder Acceleration, which really helps you accelerate to the next group. You have an opportunity to meet with me and my team three times a month. Yes, me personally, I'm going to be hosting the call and the rest of my team three times a month. It's super cheap. It's way less than having a minimum wage employee. And there you're going to learn valuable skills as scaling, strategy, sales, marketing, culture, how you really dial in your offer, your leadership, produce your accountability. We're going to be covering it all. And we do it three times a month, one hour. You have a chance to ask all your questions. You have a chance to actually be on a hot seat and evaluate your current business. We have people in India, the U.S., South America, literally all over the world that are a part of this group. And it's just $4.97 a month. Down below in the link, you're going to see foundericceleration.com. You can go ahead and apply there and join this incredible, fast-growing group. Let's jump back in the show. But before you do it, join the group. Let's go. We're in Vegas. We just got off stage in front of 6,000 people. Um, we literally go right into a, a limo that takes us a four-minute drive to the tarmac, to the private jet way in Vegas. We get on the jet, and I got pictures of this and everything, videos. We get on the jet. We're going to what we think is uh, Putamita. To we're flown by a client to go speak to a mastermind group. Get on the jet, fly, get land, get out of the jet. We get picked up by it's like a golf cart. We're in Mexico. <laughs> Take us to the area. We get our luggage and we call the people who are supposed to pick us up. The private vehicle. And they said, oh, we're here. We're like, no, you're not here. I don't see the vehicle. We give the, the phone to the, the guy next to us, and they're speaking Spanish. He looks at us and said, you guys have serious problems. You guys are in Los Cabos. You're not in Punta Mita. We got flown by a jet to the wrong place in Mexico. No joke. And first thing I'm thinking, I'm like with this famous high net worth individual I'm like, are, like, is somebody going to jump us? Are we going to get ransomed? What's going to happen? I'm thinking all the worst. And it was just a mistake that nobody to this day, the jet, the, the pilots didn't know. Nobody knew. So we went and grabbed Jeez. them. They were trying to go to the hotel. We said, no, you're getting on that plane and you're flying us back. And so we got on the plane. They threw, they flew us to Punta Nita. The private vehicle picked us up. We made it in time for dinner. And uh, while I was on the second flight, I had a tequila uh, in the air. So I was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna be good. But we got flown by a jet to the wrong city in Mexico. No joke. I, <laughs> I don't even know how it happened. And, but it did. And it was a fun journey. <laughs> uh, that's uh that's fun. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer that, uh, God has, uh, uh, presented us each with different super characteristics, or we have like a, uh, we're, we're a superhero in one way. What, what would you say is your gift to the world? that uh in in your your superpower yeah i i uh i connect with people and i, I really care like i'm just a relational kind of guy uh but i push people to do shit they normally wouldn't do like i get shit done that's really the value i i make and i know that sounds pretty easy but like i make sure things get done somebody can rely on me to get the thing done and i get it done and so that's one thing. And I really just push people to do beyond what they think they can do because we all need somebody to push us. I think it's because we have the similar experiences when you go through such and you get on the other side, you realize anything's possible. And honestly, nothing's going to take me out besides a bullet to the head. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's like this superpower that you have. And, and so that's, I would say my, if you call a gift superpower, that would be mine. Yeah. And you mentioned you're married. Do you have any kids? I'm married, no kids. Nope. No kids. Awesome. How long have you been married? Five years. Awesome. How how has your wife been influential to your experience? Uh I wouldn't be here without it. I mean, you're are you married? I am married for eighteen and a half years. I have five kids. 
it uh it determines everything i know so kudos on the kids i know kids i uh it when you're in this you need somebody to like inspire you and motivate you and to tell you you can do it and and she did i mean it's hard when nothing's going right um and when you can have somebody there to say they believe in you honestly that's like the biggest thing and yeah. and so that's been a rock for me and also helped avoid me from different decisions because she could see things i couldn't see when you're deep into it like i i i want to trust everybody i want to believe and everybody's good but there's a lot of bad people out there that just want to you and take advantage of you and so uh it's good having that other person to see things you can't see and help protect you yeah absolutely what uh what are you most passionate about now it sounds like you're building a lot of different uh portfolio type businesses consulting for equity and those type of things like what what is the mission of brandon t adams right now i love what i'm doing right now i i I love I love speaking. I love going on a show, having a conversation with you and speaking on podcast shows and stages. That's fun. But yeah. I really love getting a part of these companies and seeing where we're at and then helping it grow. And then obviously when you get to partake in the the liquidation where you get cash and money in your bank, that's fun too. Um I just like growing things. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, think of this, like let this past week we're raising millions of dollars for endeavor we're working on. Right. And then we get to see that money that we raise and we get to put it into marketing, into video production, into influencers, into growth. And then we get to see the revenue go up. And like that whole process from beginning to end is exhilarating for me. Like I enjoy the process. And and if you just enjoy the end result, you're going to be unhappy. <laughs> and so uh, that's, that's fun for me. And I never know what I'm going to see. I mean, we got investment in telemedicine companies to pro consumer products, something like this, energy drink, sunshine, to tech, to AI, to uh, you name it. And and so I feel like a little kid in a candy store or at college or in school that's learning by doing real shit. Awesome. Speaking of AI, what, uh, what, what do you think the future beholds for us with AI? Well, um, either we're all going to die in five or 10 years or it's going to advance. I mean, AI is a, it helps us focus more on what we can do. Like AI makes you smarter, obviously. Like we're using AI for our communication messaging. I mean, the things that are kind of fascinating for me is, and it's already here, uh, the technology. So think of me, like I create videos every day. Well, Brandon T. Adams gets tired sometimes and doesn't want to create videos. But what right. if I can just have a virtual simulation of me that's out there that is get which there is this out there and it's me yep. creating videos, but it's BTA like animated BTA or whatever AI BTA that's creating content consistently. And all I do is spit in the algorithm. I want this, this, and this this week. And there's four videos a day that go out that looks just like me, but it's actually right. not me. That's right. the stuff that's exciting for growth, but scary if the wrong person inputs the wrong code into the system where it could ruin my brand overnight. Yeah, for sure. And for the listeners that are paying or paying attention, the uh, one of the softwares that he's referring to is called HeyGen. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know if that's the one that you guys utilize, but uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal. It literally could just take my background, my mannerisms, my voice, you feed it five minutes of video and all of a sudden it's doing my same gestures. My, it, it's pretty phenomenal doing it in foreign languages. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, the, uh, it, speaking of, you know, when, when I asked you about AI, the first thing you said, if we're not all dead in five to 10 years, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a video that I actually saw yesterday, which was pretty intense. I don't know if you've seen this. It was like the tiny drone, that is that is uh governed by ai have you seen this thing it's like a, I, it's like a handheld I, drone and, it, no. and it's built to kill it it, it really is it, it's the it's the craziest thing it it uh it reacts it has facial recognition and you can like send it out and, and it kills it'll, somebody it'll, it'll it'll just goes and it and it 
it impacts him right here and it and it does like this brain impact that like shoots him like right it, it was it was the craziest thing and it, it was demonstrated on this stage i think it might have been from ces uh frankly but uh <laughs> But yeah, man, it is it is a wild day and age that we live in. I don't think that's really where we're gonna get to, um, but uh, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see uh, the level of uh, you know productivity that we can get to. Like, like you're talking about, you know, producing four videos a day where you're not even involved. There's just a script writer, and that script writer could even be Chat GBT learning yeah. through a GBT that's trained with your. I mean, exact films writing. are being created. Think about yeah. films. If you if you ever read the book by uh, Jim Carrey, uh, like I read the whole book and he talks about, which is like him thinking of the future. Think about Jim Carrey going into this simulation room and they have all these things hooked up to him and he does all these kind of smiling, reacting, laughing, everything. And then they take his his AI, who he is, and they go create a bunch of films without him having to act anymore. And then he's licensing it out. And he can do, think about it, instead of doing one or two films a year, he can do 30 in a matter of a year, and he's getting paid a licensing fee. And so think about how they can output so much more stuff at such a high level of production. And it's, uh, I don't know, there, there's good and bad, I think, to it, but it is exciting for a money-making opportunity. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. So you're involved in a bunch of different industries, different companies, products, different things like that. If you have $10 million or even call it a million bucks, where are you putting that in, in, a, in a private equity type investment right now? What sectors do you see as uh, taking off and being highly uh, leveraged? So, so one of them that we recently invested in is a fund called Cypress Send It. And I share that one because it's a passion of mine and it's it's has already five products within the fund. We will acquire other products, but it's products that are health conscious. I believe in things that are really helping people and making the world a better place. I don't want to do any investments in anything like cigars or cigarettes or anything that's like bad for your health. Um, so things that are making humans live happier and healthier lives. Another investment we have is uh, IV therapy company, The Drip Bar. We have about 90 locations around the country. We franchise them out. And I love the recurring revenue aspect. So anything that has recurring revenue, subscription base, people sign up, but they get two drips a month. They pay three, $400 a month. And so I like that. I really believe in, I don't know if you do IV therapy, but it helps me. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, everybody thinks of like you're hungover and okay, hydration. For me, it's for getting better workouts, just feeling more on top of my game. So I really love that. Again, it's making the world a better place. I do, like you look at AI. So uh, we have investment in a company called Bacodia. It's a, it's, this guy used to have tele, uh, like call centers. And, and so you think all these calls are going every single day. A human can only do so many calls. So this is outbound calls with the AI system. We take all these scripts from clients, we input it to the system, and then you can't even tell the difference between it being an AI or actual human. And so we can do 20, 30,000 calls a day outbound and it means it gets more people in the door and getting more sales for companies. So that's another company leveraging AI. So anything for me, I think opportunity is I believe in things that can make you a better person, live a, a better life and, and healthier life. Those are things I want to invest in. AI, things that can advance technology that can really... Uh, make things easier to allow people to focus their time and energy on things that are not monotonous, things that are more like moving the needle. And uh, also the long game. I think everybody wants to get a quick buck. I mean, I do have money in crypto. I, I don't look at my portfolio uh, very often right now, but uh, good, time I, to, I, good time to look right now. Yeah. I think everything <laughs> is what you put in now, 10 years from now. I, I I'm not, I've always been a long game. And then one last thing, I, I think, and you're doing this right now, Chris, you're doing a podcast show, we're creating content. I still invest a lot of money into my own brand because my brand, you think of eyeballs, acquiring attention. The more people that see my stuff over the years, they like me, they trust me. More, whatever I do down the road, investing, whatever my offer is, if enough people like and trust me, they're more likely to work with me. 
And so I'm just planting more seeds for the future. So as my brand, people like and trust me, they're more likely to buy it from me. I'm no The Rock or anybody with a big following like that. Um, but if I can build like and trust with the right people, it can help me make money for the rest of my life. So that's an investment that's kind of non-direct um, that I do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, man, it sounds like you're very passionate about business, investing, and you got a lot of the principle centered, uh, you know, characteristics and everything that, uh, that you're working towards. What, what are some things outside of work that you're passionate about that, yeah. uh, you know, give us a peek behind the curtain to, you know, Brandon T. Adams, uh, outside of, out, outside of business. Yeah. I, I, uh, I own a bunch of guns. Um, I, I love shooting guns. I, I grew up in Iowa. So what, what's your knows? favorite one? Uh, I have a, uh, Keller uh, signature, uh, Keller sig signature rifle. It's an assault rifle and it's very light and uh, 223. And I love that gun and you know, I feel safe for having it, but, uh, target practicing with that or a Glock. I've got a Glock since I was, a. Uh, 21, 22 years old, target practicing. But these are guns like if I ever the world it, it's a fan. I, I got two guns that are going to protect me. But I also like shooting shotguns and stuff like that. But I enjoy target shooting. Um, once a year, I go back with my family. We go hunting. But uh, that was just kind of my childhood. But I enjoy going back to where I'm from, going on the river with my friends. We go kneeboarding or skiing and, and just spending time with them and, and really being in the middle of nowhere. It's uh, it's where I'm from, and I like going back to it. So I will literally do a 30 hour trip. I'll spend a lot of money on a flight to go home to be with some family for a short period of time to go on the river, to go on the woods, to ride four wheelers, just so I can disconnect. And so awesome. that, and then fitness, I I it keeps me sane, man. I run or go to the gym. That's my guilty pleasure. I love it. I love it. Uh, before we uh, wrap up here, uh, what are your your top three habits that have helped lead you to success? Discipline in the gym and exercise. Thinking positive, not negative. And, and I want to really enlighten on that. Um, no matter what's happened to you, if you choose to think negative, it does nothing good for you. Like, be careful what you speak. And what you say and be careful the people around you and what they speak because if you allow that to go to your head that's your subconscious and that will be either positive for you or negative so be very careful of who you're surrounding yourself with those are two and then the third one is just taking a lot of action i mean there's some days i don't want to do I, I wake up and i don't feel energized but even if it's a couple things whether it's making a couple phone calls a couple emails every day if you can do a couple things that move forward that can help you get they build up for bigger successes. And so I guess the the discipline, the habit of taking action every single day, even if it's small things. I love that. I love that. Brandon, where is a good spot for the listeners to to find you more at? Whether is it social media, YouTube, where, where's the good spot there? I am at Brandon T. Adams everywhere. Send me a direct message to my uh, social media platform. I'll respond, but at Brandon T. Adams everywhere, feel free to like, follow, and engage. Awesome. And what, what are some things that you're passionate about right now that maybe some of the listeners can help engage and add value to you for? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I do a event every year. Uh, it's called Rise and Record. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. It's all about helping people share their story with the world through video. And so if somebody wants to make a trip to Nashville in October, um, come hang out and go to riseandrecord.com. It's something I really enjoy to do. And it's, it's more of a kind of impact and give back. Love it. Love it. Brandon, thank you so much for your time. It's the most valuable asset that we have. And, uh, you know, spending some of that with me today and, and sharing this value with the listeners. Uh, we appreciate it. Last but not least, somebody's down and out. They're thinking about giving up. They're going through a tough time like you did uh, just a few years ago, or they're, uh, they're thinking about making the leap and they're, they're not quite ready to, to make the leap into entrepreneurship. What kind of advice are you giving to that person that isn't quite ready or, or is struggling a little bit? If you're struggling right now, just know that somebody needs you. Somebody needs your value. Somebody needs your message. Somebody needs your voice. And if you give up right now, that person isn't going to get the help from you. So it's not even about you. It's about the other people you can help. 
And and the other thing I that wakes me up, I mean, this is uh, a thought that really drives me every day is I don't want to wake up one day, be 90 years old, look back and be like, what if I would have did that? And so I live on this life of not having what if, just do it. What's the least that can happen? You can lose all your money. Well, we've lost all our money. You know what? You can get it back. There's more money out there. Don't live in the what if. I love it. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank Until you, next time.